Dragon Slayer Media presents Rich Gaspari and John Romano in Fitness, Fame, and Fortune. In your day, how many guys do you think did diuretics? I mean, when I competed, you know, in the pro level, I did see people who have used, you know, diuretics, Lasix, um, aldactoside, aldactone, you know, products like, you know, diuretics like those. You know, honestly, you know, I was known for being one of the most ripped bodybuilders and I never used, I can't say never, I did use in one show, I used aldactone and it screwed me all up. (laughs) <laughs> made me hold water. It had an opposite rebound effect. I took, it, I took it for 10 days, 10 days out for the show. For the first two days, I looked amazing. Then three days, four days, five days, into the sixth and seventh day, I thought it was just me, but I started looking blurry. You right. know? And um, when I got on stage in the Olympia, it was 89, I was holding water. I, I'm never known for holding water on stage. Right, right. I was holding and water, and they worked the shit out of me because I guess they weren't expecting me to look like that, and I shed the water out. But it was too late. I ended up getting edged out by a newcomer, Vince Taylor, who beat me. Right. And if I was in shape without diuretics, I would have still gotten into the top, at least top three, you know, in the Olympia. But well, he, had, he edged me out. Well, what, here's what happens, okay, from a, from a pharmacological perspective. The, the, the idea to take diuretics is to get rid of that last little bit of water under your skin that's usually in your glutes, your hamstrings, low back, you know, the problem, you know, the yeah. last fat to go, okay? So where is the water? The water is either in a fat cell or in a muscle cell. There's not some kind of magical bladder between your wall, between the muscle wall and the skin that fills up with water and expands and contracts. It's, it, it's not that way. It's either in the muscle or it's, or it's in the fat cell. Now, if you have no fat cells under your skin and, and you still take a protracted course of diuretics, I've seen them a month long. This I've seen actually a diuretic course that started 30 days out, which is absolutely insane. But, you know, people follow that. If that water comes out of whatever little fat is left under the skin, where is the majority of the rest of the water contained? It's in your it's in your muscle, it's in your your, your organs, it's in your muscle, but you're in muscle. It's, the majority of it is in your 70% muscle. 70% of your muscle is water. Exactly. So now you're sucking water out of your muscle because there's none anywhere else. And you get and you get on stage. What are you going to look like? You're going to look like a balloon with a hole in it, like that deflated, you know, that kind of. And, and, and I've seen so many guys that think that they were actually smooth, but they were actually flat. Right. And, and, or they, you know, because they, they, they were too dehydrated and their skin, you, you get this loose looking skin. Right. Cause so the look water, like because instead of, instead of the muscle being full and pushing against the skin, it's deflated because it, you can't, glycogen is three parts water. You can't fill the muscle up with glycogen when there's no water. So yeah. it's not going to happen. Okay, so you definitely are going to lose the water from the muscle. It's going to deflate your size. The muscle's not going to be pushing up against the skin, and you're going to look deflated. Look at the pictures of these guys, top pros. They post two weeks out. There are gigantic shredded striations everywhere, veins popping against their skin. They show up two weeks later at the Olympia. Where's that guy? Where did he go? What happened to the guy that posted on Instagram two weeks ago? He's nowhere to be found. Because why? Because everybody's got to do diuretics. It's like somebody etched it in stone somewhere. That Now, prior to competition, you must do diuretics. And they all do. And it's I don't know where this came from. As, as a guy who preps bodybuilders for competition, I have used diuretics the fewest scant number of times I, I could count probably on one hand the time I've had to use diuretics with somebody because I you got to be shredded if you're shredded you don't need diuretics you proved it well I, I mean I, I genetically I could get very very lean and ripped 
You know, I posted a picture on my Instagram of me 17. And I'm doing the most muscular. You can you see the striations in my in my chest, you know, and I'm like, holy crap, I was pretty, pretty lean, you know, right. when I was a teenager. Um, and I never knew really about usage of diuretics. Um, I did it very naturally where, you know, I went into a show. I did cut sodium um, the, the day, be, no, two days before the show is I cut sodium out. Mm -hmm. I drank a lot of water right up into the show. And then the day before the show, by the afternoon, I cut drinking in half. Right. And and, and that was the only thing I really did. I, I, I sometimes drank like diuretic tea, which is right. a natural uva ursa and those ingredients, right. the herbs that really are not like taking a prescription diuretic that goes beyond, you know, taking water out of the muscle. They, right. they do stop, those natural diuretics do stop to a point, you know, and, and it, they put stress on the kidneys. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I witnessed, you know, Momo Beneziza dying right. and I heard his protocol was like crazy. You, you, know, you were there that day, weren't you? That's, that's the thing. I was there and to see someone cramp, I seen bodybuilders like, um, Beckles, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, John Brown. Remember yeah. John Brown? But yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he took uh, he took like Lasix before his show, and he came to my room, and he was all cramped up. And what could I do? And you know, and I was like, I don't even know what to tell people like that because I'd never <laughs> done them. I just never done them, you know. And 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 they're so dangerous because when you're screwing with removing, as you know, removing liquids from your body you you make an imbalance of your electrolytes you know and that's an electrical impost your electrolytes for you know right. your heart and then your heart stops and or you get a cramp in your heart like right. you just have to get a cramp in your muscle and you die now i've used and i, and I i'm gonna say i have used diuretics off season and the only reason is i was always in shape all year round mm -hmm. and i would eat you know pretty clean, but I would hold water, you know, <clears throat> if I wasn't getting ready for a show and hold water. Sure. And to make it easy, I would take a diuretic before a guest posing and I would, I would, you know, snap yeah, into but, shape. But, but in that, in that sense, you're not depleted. No, you're not, you're not I'm depleted. eating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you're just to get, I mean, and that, that's absolutely understandable. And you're not doing it. You're doing it right before the, your event. You're not doing yes. it for, three, four weeks ahead. No, of no, no. I'll do it the day before the event, you know, slap on color, take a diuretic. <laughs> and the next day I'm on stage. You're like, wow, holy crap. You're in great shape. Right. You yeah. know, I never, but it, cause I didn't have, like you said, you have water in your fat and your muscle. You don't have really that much, you know, uh, what do you call it? Fat on your skin. So you are going to lose that water and then your skin's going to get tighter. And that's what the concept of taking these diuretics they think that they're going to get themselves to be even more cut by doing that. Right. And it never, it never, I've seen so many bodybuilders, even to today's bodybuilders, you, like you said, some of the top pros competing in the Olympia, seeing them on Instagram. I, I, mean, I hate to, you know, point out people, but let's point out, you know, um, the guy who just competed. Um, Roly Winkler. Roly Winkler. Great. I, I think this guy has the most potential than any bodybuilder. I know you really think he looks great. I know you even said that's going to be the next Mr. Olympia. And you know that he hasn't been able now this year to peak and he may not qualify for the Olympia. No, I know. I, I don't think he's put the size back on that he's lost. You know, he's that, pretty massive. You think he not, doesn't have size? He's got he's enough not, size. He's, he's massive. Not, he's, he's not as big as he was. He, no, he, no, he's not. Not, not, not nearly. And, really? and but but I mean even even though even still I mean if you saw that picture of him hitting that m most muscular shot on you know two weeks prior to the show you look at that and you go my God what planet did he come from and yeah. then and then he's two weeks later where did he go you know yeah. it's like where's that guy you know and it's, but see the thing now I, I, I am the I have I have the the the, the one of the most you know guiltiest. I'm one of the most guiltiest parties of all of doing this. I'm the guy who caused 
Paul Dillette to lock up on stage. Okay, so at, at that event, even though he wasn't my client and I did it, I was just checking on him as a favor to Charles Glass. And we, we made some adjustments right at the very end and I turned out to be wrong. And, you know, that took I, – I, I was so afraid after that. I didn't prep another competitor for 10 freaking years. Really? Yeah, after that. Because what, I, what, I just, so I never you never gave me details. Like, so <laughs> I know we talked about it in a couple shows, but what – what happened to Paul Dillette? I mean, Paul Dillette would always cramp on stage, it seemed, you know, when he posed or he couldn't hold poses very long. But yeah, he always had that tremble that he couldn't. Hold. I think that was because he didn't really work posing like you act disposing. Yeah. But but um, no, what happened was I was I was in Ohio with Shelly Beatty. We were doing an appearance for, um, you know, Twin Lab and she was competing in the Miss International and. You know, I was there. I had a couple other people I was I was keeping an eye on. And Charles Glass bangs on my door, you know, and, and asked me if I'd come take a look at Paul Dillette. I go, yeah, absolutely. So I go up to his room. I see Paul and and um, I go, well, yeah, you know, he's, he's he, he looks amazing, but he was still holding a little water and, you know, his low back and, and you know, hamstrings and glutes. And I, and I thought that, you know, 12, because it was two hours before prejudging, I thought you're going to have to shoot some Lasix to get rid of that. And, um, you know, I gave him 20 milligrams of Lasix IV, like I've done 100, not 100, but several other times before. I've done it to myself more than I've probably done it to anyone else just to wow. understand how it works. OK, and then um, he, he went, he started peeing. Everything looked great. He looked freaking phenomenal. He would like explode when he, when he posed, it was incredible. And then get to this, get, gets to the stage and he, and he, and he locked up reason being is that he had taken the rest of his, you know, diuretics that he was already taken, diazide, aldactyl. Uh, it was, a, it was a, several. So, uh, you know, on top of that, the Lasix was just over the top. The problem that you got to worry about, you know, is potassium because with yeah. potassium, you can, you know, you can cause a heart attack. Your heart, like you said before, your heart muscle cramps. So it's not only just sodium you got to worry about, it's potassium too. And you start messing around with those levels with varying diuretics, potassium sparing, not potassium sparing. And, you know, th th that's what happens. So what happens if guys taking potassium sparing diuretics? you know, where they pee a lot and then they have no sodium. That's just as bad. That's, I mean, that's what, that's what I'm saying. That's just as bad. Right. That's what happened to, to Ben Aziza was, it, um, uh, not Ben. Yeah. Um, uh, Milos, they, they were going to, where is it? Ben Aziza? No, it wasn't Ben Aziza. It was someone who lived. I forgot who it was. They were having, you know, these issues on, on the tour and, and they were going to give them, I don't know what they were going to, I think they were going to give him potassium. And Milo said, no, don't give him potassium. You'll kill him. You, it's, it's the opposite. Yeah. He needs sodium, you know, and, and that he was right. And it saved the guy's life. But um, he, he'll chime in and tell us who that was. But th that's, I mean, that's a fact. So the thing is, the thing is with diuretics is you, you have to understand that they can kill you. And you have to understand that no matter how many times you've used them, they're still unpredictable. And you you can use them one time and get one result. You can use them another time under another set of circumstances that you may not even be aware of, and they'll have a different effect. So if you're coaching someone on using diuretics, you got to know how to deal with all of those situations in order to keep your client alive. Yeah. And unfortunately, recently, a girl, you know, was was – not the first, not the second, but I think the third or fourth victim of a coach who didn't know what the hell they were doing when it comes to diuretics, and she's dead. And that's that. That yeah, is, and that's recent. Yeah, it happened two weeks, like a week ago. I don't want to name, but that's that that that's a fact. That's, so, I've seen that, and it's just horrible. And that, and that's the thing, you know. You know, for our listeners, I mean, there's probably listen, body being listeners, but a lot of people that are not uh, don't have the knowledge. Like, why are you taking diuretics? You know, you want to get rid of that water. What are diuretics for? They're basically for people who have, I bet, uh, you know, have heart issues. Correct? High because what's that? High blood pressure. High blood pressure, or their heart's weak and it's not able to pump 
Well, I mean, my dad was on diuretics, you know, because, you know, he was older and he was weaker. His lungs weren't working properly and they were, they kept filling up with fluid. So they had him on diuretics to get rid of it. I said, Do you have him on diuretics? I guess the diuretics takes it out everywhere. So yeah. if it's in your lungs. It's going to take it out of your lungs. It would be the uh, same thing with my dad with his emphysema. They, he would get fluid build up and they'd give him this big dose of, of Lasix and he'd pee it all out. Yeah. So, the, the, Richie, the thing is, the thing is this: somewhere al now th along the line, somewhere along the line, somebody decided that this has got to be the way it is. And th this girl who recently died, her diuretic protocol started a month out, a month away from the show. She's taking diuretics every day. Okay, so. And, and they're changing. They're getting more severe towards the end. It, 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 I just I've never seen anything so crazy in my entire life. And I, how can you determine a month out that you're going to need diuretics in 30 days, that your body's going to be needing them at that time? You need the water all the way up until then, right? So how did it, in your experience, did you notice this happening? Did you see all of a sudden, wow, all of a sudden everybody's doing diuretics. Where did, where did this come from? I mean, I, I mean, not that I'm like so in tune with competition prep today. I know during my day, you know, I, I've seen a lot of bodybuilders use diuretics. You know, a lot of times if they were behind, they would figure they need to use diuretics. But I mean, if you're, if you're ready for a show, and I was said, like, I'd be ready two weeks out from a show. You don't want to be out. You don't want to be ready a month out because you're going to start losing muscle. But if you're ready two weeks out, you're able to kind of glide yourself into the show. And I would just glide in, not even changing much. You know, like I said, maybe a little bit of my sodium, um, you know, drinking a little less water. But I would just glide into the show. Do you, do you think maybe... The, that idea in these gurus' minds is that that two weeks is a critical time period to lose muscle, and they're so they'll. It, it seems to be. It seems to me that the athletes are not dieting severely enough to get to that point that they're shredded two weeks out. They're like yeah. leaving some in the tank and expecting that the diuretic course they're going to take for two weeks is going to is going to clear that out. I, rather, rather than I just think that out. I think that because looking. You know, being a you know a critic of today's bodybuilders, I don't see them get in. You know, I showed you a picture of me at seventeen shredded. I don't see teenagers shredded like that. Oh. You know what I mean? I, well, I just you don't see it. Well, you know, you're, and, you're a freak of nature, though. So I know, but still, there's a lot of great <laughs> bodies out there that they didn't do that diligent on their diet. You know, to get. I, I can name off a hundred of them back in the day, back in the early eighties in Venice, all those competitors, th those guys didn't do diuretics. I, no. I don't, I don't know any of them. Who so did. you knew some of the top, you know, I, I set a standard in being ripped. Then there was another guy that you probably saw in the, the gym there at Venice, Renel Javier. Oh, Renel was unbelievably he, shredded. All that's time. what I'm saying. He got so shredded. Do you know if he took diuretics to look like that? I don't I, I don't I didn't know him well enough to know, but I, I knew who he was working with. And I'm pretty sure he wasn't doing diarrhea. Yeah. So there there go. There's a point there that, you know, to get in that condition, it's not necessary to take diuretics. It, there are some certain, certain people that have an issue where their skin is just thick. You know, not everybody gets shredded. Nobody has that ability. Some people have real rounded muscle mm -hmm. and they don't have that where you see every grain. You know, that great, I was known to be grainy looking, you know, they call it right, grainy right, looking. Right, right. And you can see the fibers, you know, the fibers in your muscle. But not everybody gets like that. Not everybody can get like, and the diuretic is not going to get you that way. You know, it's just, it's just either you haven't dieted long enough, you know, and, I, and I've put people on diets. I told you, I, I got a friend of mine who's in his 50s on his bucket list to get ready for a show. I it took me six months to get him in shape, six months. <laughs> but the reason why I did it very slowly, and I said to him, I said, I'm removing six months, the fat that you accumulated your entire life. Right, right, you know, right. I'm taking fat off your body that you did when you were a little kid. You know, <laughs> you know, from your body. But it was a very slow process. And I think guys have to have that slow process of, of preparing you know, I always tell people, even if you're in good shape, 
you need 16 weeks to get ready for a shower. At least, at least. 16 weeks. And it's kind of just to get yourself prepped and how to figure out your metabolism, you know, and getting yourself in shape. 16 weeks. And, you know, my mistake, you know, I, I got somebody ready for a show earlier than that. Remember, I was telling you because I yeah, thought yeah. they were in shape. It was a woman. And I thought, well, they're in pretty good shape. And I think, you know, they can get in shape in, you know, 10 weeks. Well, I was off because <laughs> I needed more, you know, you needed more time. And then when you do that, what do you do to the person when you want to get them in shape? You give them more cardio. You lessen their calories. So now you got somebody eating a thousand calories and doing two hours of cardio a day. Right. It's the worst thing to do to people. We're, the worst, and that that wears you out. It deflattens you. It does all everything bad. So the the I the, the whole concept of minimal manipulation. Yes. Is, is lost to to me. You want to, you, know, you see these guys in the gym. They look phenomenal day after day after day, and then they're they're like right there ready for the show. They're posing in a mirror in the gym, and you go. This guy could win the Olympia, right? And he looks so amazing. And then, what what did he do? You know, it's like a couple days later, three days, a week later that they're not they're gone. So, so somewhere along the line, somebody decided that that either they, they've just decided that you have to do di diuretics because I you can't find today a competitor who's going getting ready to step on stage that's not doing them. No, I, all, I agree. I, I, I mean, it's sad, but I think it's just something, like you said, these gurus are getting these athletes to take diuretics where it should be just a slow process of getting you in shape. You know, and, it should be slow and steady, you know. And minimal and minimal, minimal manipulation. If exactly. You look, the, if the, you look the, good day after day after day, just keep looking good. Why would you change? I it? think I think you we, you know you were you were helping Mike Christian and you you, you sodium loaded him for the L.A. Uh, Grand Prix, and and I went into that show and that was my first time. He was favored to win. He was holding water, <laughs> like it. I guess it messed up, and I was like, "What the hell did he do?" Yeah. So, but he did. You know, the whole thing is doing this extreme of sodium loading. And then you know it works, but I guess sometimes it doesn't work. And I never believed in doing, although it, it probably is a, a method that works done right, I've never believed in doing anything that was too drastic. Well, you know, it's one of those things. Mike Matarazzo said something to me one time, very interesting. He said, you know what? At, we were talking about this almost the same topic. And he said, you know, John, everything works. It just doesn't work all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's true, right? I mean, you've experienced yeah. that. I mean, it's yeah. it's, it's, it's the it's the God's honest truth. You can think you have your protocol dialed in, perfect. Yeah, it, it it's worked for you three times in a row. The fourth time, it, it's a disaster. Yeah, you know, I, I, the first time I, I I went into the the professional world, that was the that was the time that was the the show that I put a mark in the sport because I came in. So ultra shredded. My skin looked like cellophane in that show. And I remember Chris Dickerson saying, we've never seen a man in that condition ever, ever. <laughs> you know, ever. He was right. You know? <laughs> so, well, my point is that I had everything, you know, when I, I talk on the show, I had a log of everything I did, what I ate every day, how I trained every day, my supplements I took. I had it all down on paper. I said, okay, I'm going to follow this again. Follow the same protocol. Go into the show. I, I mean, I still looked great, but I didn't look like that show. And I'm like, why didn't I look like that show? Right. <laughs> you know, F Flex Wheeler always would say, everybody's had that one show. Yeah. And and you can never, it, it's never come, you've never gotten that back. You might get close, but yeah. you, it's, you get that one shot and it, and depends on where it is, can can lead you in a lot of different directions. That's, that's what I said. I've gotten close, but I just couldn't get that. It was just, it was the fullness, the striations, the skin looking like cellophane. Oh, and it was like, and by the way, I didn't take diuretics for that show. Just to let you know. <laughs> you know like and so, and so as, as a, a, a great point of, you know, empirical evidence, it you represent the fact that you can get absolutely cellophane skin shredded day of the show without using diuretics. 
definitely. Okay, you can also get that way by using diuretics. Yeah. But can. the point is, why would you if you didn't have to, yeah. right? So it it's because it's harder it's harder work how much harder work is it how much harder did you have to work to be ready two weeks out rather than be two weeks late and compensate for those two weeks with a boatload of diuretics yeah no it, it was a lot of work a lot of work of posing and you know cardio and lifting and dieting and depleting yourself you know it's funny when you when i did get ready two weeks out i slowly stopped the cardio, right? Minimize the cardio to let my body start to fill up, right? Very slow because if you stop doing cardio, you know, less activity, you're going to keep more glycogen. Sure. So I was able to, you know, get myself to slowly start to fill up before a show by minimizing the cardio and minimizing the training in the last week. Right. Um, do you think? Do you think guys pay enough attention? to themselves in the off season, for, for, for example, and I know, I know you've experienced the same thing. You can be going along doing one thing and all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's maybe after a meal or after a training session or something, you're sitting around watching TV and all of a sudden you're going, oh, my skin feels really tight, you know? And, and like, you're, you're, you're like just massively pumped. And where did that come from? You know, or, or 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 you wake up in the morning dry as a freaking bone, shredded, vascular as hell, completely different from the day before. What? How did that happen? What did I do differently? And you, and if because you keep track in a journal, and the other guys that keep track in a journal, you could always go back and say what is different about today or yesterday that's different from tomorrow. Why did I look that way then and not now? And you can you can use that, but I, I don't see guys doing that anymore. To, to no, I you know what they do is they just put it all in the hands of a guru, mm -hmm. and they and you know they'll get someone to prepare them for a show, but then really not get a guru to helping off season. But you know you you got to have some knowledge of your body, right? You know why do you do this and not and just say okay I'm just going to give my body to this guy and let him just do all the work, you know it. I, I do believe that it's good to have a, a set of eyes to look right. at you the last two weeks as you come in because when you're on a diet, you lose your mind. You know, a lot of times whether <laughs> you think you're flat, you think you're full, you think you're holding water, right. and you need somebody, you need a good expert to determine if you're holding water, if you're flat, you know, if you're full. You need a guy like that to kind of tell you what to do to manipulate it. I just sometimes just think these gurus, and there's a lot, I'm not going to disparage gurus because I think a lot of them are great. You know, we had Chris Aceto on the show. He helped, you know, Jay Cutler. Um, possibly, maybe I was, if I had a guru, a good one that knew my body, maybe my, I told you my later years, I was just mm -hmm. unable to get myself into the same shape and condition that I was able to do. Maybe a guy would have been able to say, well, maybe change your training this way, your diet this way, because your body does go through changes. Isn't it, right. isn't it so that your body changes every five years? Seven. Every seven years. So your body changes. Yeah. So, you know, I had this run. And, you know, it's funny you say seven years. I had a run of seven years. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. What? It was they actually say it actually says that your body replace, you know, rep, replaces all its cells every seven years. I mean, wow, in, in something to that degree. But, but yeah, the 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 life in the hands of the guru concept is is really perplexing to me because I've seen people that just don't know what to do at all, without, at, all. at all without asking the guru. I mean, they don't know what to eat the next meal. You know. Yeah. Or, or, you know, they win the show. You're, I'm interviewing them for RX Muscle, and it's usually a girl. So what's next for you? I don't know. I have to talk to my coach. You know, yeah. you don't know what you want to do. I mean, they <laughs> rely on them for everything, you know. Um, and, 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 and a lot of it has to do with the fact that these gurus have been given 
places of authority in magazines, on websites. They become identifiable. Like you think of, you know, George Farrell with muscular development or, you know, they, they have these they have these relationships that are associatable, that are supposedly makes them, you know, better or more authoritative or, you know, they got this list of, you know, competitors. You know, Chris Aceto, Chris Aceto has has prepped what 32 pros and has had i don't know so how many hundreds how many i think 90 something first places that's not plastered all over social media somewhere some accolade that he represent that he promotes to show how great he is he's good people know it people find him if they want him right so yes. it, it, it's it, it a lot of this today i think has to do with the fact that that social media is such a pumping ground for competitive gurus to try to out guru each other and and you know amass this you know uh, clientele that is so mesmerized and wowed by their knowledge and magical powers that you know they throw their life in their hands and Unfortunately, for some of these people, this one young lady in particular cost her her life. You know, no, it's it's awful. You know, for that, I didn't, like like I, I witnessed, like I said, Momo Beniziza, um, so many bodybuilders. Like I, you know, I, I told well, you, I saw Albert Beckles, Samir Banu. I seen a lot of guys that use diuretics. Andreas Munzer. Andreas Munzer. So many bodybuilders that I've seen use diuretics that had just. That had problems. Problems. How many with guys? How many guys do you know spent the night show in the emergency room hooked up to an IV? Because <laughs> yeah, they, a lot of guys. And you know, it was funny. They they were doing. Remember, um, I don't know what it was in the nineties. They were doing testing yeah. for diuretics because yeah. they just didn't want to see. Maybe it was after Bo Momo Benes. Yeah. They didn't want to see people dying from getting ready for a show, so they they. Um, we're basically testing athletes for that, you know, but, uh, you know, and so, some of them failed and yeah. some of them had to sue in order to make that work. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, as a person who does contest prep, I, I am very troubled by th this kind of laissez faire attitude about deadly items, namely insulin, diuretics and DNP. And, and yeah. those three drugs are not only deadly, but unpredictable it, 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 to certain to certain degree. And I, the smart gurus agree with me on that point. I know Chris Aceto does because we talked about it. But I, I, I think if you're going to toy with those compounds, you better know what you're doing, man. And don't rely on somebody else to know that for you. You've got to really educate yourself. I mean, I, I wouldn't even imagine doing, you know, like, you know, people thought I was on DMP because I got so shredded, but it's such a dangerous product. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, what is it? It's basically bug poison, correct? It's, it's one molecule away from TNT, from, 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 or no, nitroglycerin. It's one. But, what, but isn't it what it does is it heats up the core temperature of your. Well, it, it's an it's an uncoupling agent. What it does is in the in the energy cycle, converting ATP to ADP. Instead of the conversion of ATP to ADP, instead of ADP, it produces heat. It uncouples the 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 action in the Krebs cycle. So you're 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 liberating and you're liberating the energy conversion from from a atp to adp instead of energy to heat so you just you just you're just it's it's like having a gas tank with a hole in it basically so wow. you're you're going along and you're just dripping out fuel it's not it's not getting produced as energy so your body keeps trying to produce energy you know liberating fat stores to produce energy to make up for the leak in the tank and that's how it burns more fat but the the, the heat buildup is something you got to pay attention to you can cook your organs with that stuff overheat and that's what happened to Andreas Munzer no Andreas Munzer um, bled out basically he had taken a ton of citadrin which is a um, anti-cortisol and his his just he had took so much of it that his organs were just bleeding out they they opened them up and there was just blood everywhere they just closed them up and said he's done Wow. I, I thought it was DNP. I didn't know it was. So that's another one. Why would you take an anti-cortisol? Because cortisol makes you hold water. I, you know, 
Mun Munzer made a name for himself as being the most shredded guy in, in the entire world. I mean, not only ripped, but detailed. I mean, he had yeah. striations on top of striations on top of striations. Yeah, yeah. You only get that by repetitively peeling your skin down to the almost, you know, ultimate shreddedness. And you're in those those creases between the, the the striations get deeper and deeper and deeper and that's why he had that incredible look but to, you know to, to the the drug protocol that was published in der spiegel magazine after his death which has been since contested somewhat but um overall i've saw i've seen the original one and it's pretty accurate the amount of drugs that he was doing on a weekly basis was absolutely staggering and you know the, the anti-cortisol is just part of the mix is to not leave any stone unturned that if there's any element missing from the, the protocol that is going to cause you to hold three grams of water that's unacceptable you got you got to get rid of that you got to get rid of all of it and, and that's <laughs> that, that's the way you know that's what happens so you're that's walking on a knife edge right there and you know you slip fall and you that's it you're done you're you're dead I mean, speaking about some of the bodybuilders that died, unfortunately, um, you know, the other, the last bodybuilder that died of a heart attack, um, Dallas John Meadows. John Meadows. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I had, he had nothing to do with diuretics. I know he had some heart issues. He had a heart attack in May. I wonder um, if he got the COVID vaccine. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. They talk about blood clotting. He had, a, a I guess, an, an aneurysm in his heart from that and it's a shame because he was 49 great guy um he was actually a really good guru that helped a lot of bodybuilders um very knowledgeable in the sport see that his death is perplexing because he was such a good guru yeah but he knew more than doctors he knew it is it is categorically impossible for me to believe that john meadows is dead because he made a mistake yeah, I, I'm sorry, but that's just not possible. So, um, luck of the draw, you get a blood clot, goes breaks off, goes to your brain, you stroke out and die. What caused it? There's certainly there's certainly evidence. There is evidence out there that the vaccine could have done it. I don't know John well enough to know if he got vaccinated. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know. If you know we don't want to say that <laughs> possibly, but yeah. also. But low he, had heart attack. he had a heart attack in May, and they said 80% of individuals who had a heart attack within a year's time have a chance of having Another a blood clot. Right. You go to your brain or your heart, 80%. So it is a high percentage. There's all, there's all kinds of reasons why it could have happened. I'm just throwing one out there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, there is a lot about, you know, the COVID uh, vaccine causing blood clots. Heart attack um, or blood clots. Yep. Yeah. So, so and that's I mean, scary. But we're just we're just supposing at this point. But it it could have been anything. We'll that well, you and I will probably never know. Yeah. If it was something. I think if it was something post autopsy that would indicate, you know, something that could broaden the knowledge base of our industry and maybe prevent somebody else from having the same issue. I know John probably would have wanted something like that to come out, but overall, you know, I look at deaths like his, and they're real head scratchers because he he just knew too much yeah. to, to to you know put himself in harm's way. I would never imagine him doing that, um, you know. So, uh, you know, who knows? We're we're never going to know. But um, all of the rest of the guys that have died and died recently. Many of them are just absolute tragedies because of the preventative nature of what happened to them. Dallas McCarver would be alive today if it wasn't for a stupid mistake in calculation, you know. And that's 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 a tough pill to swallow. Um, Rich Piana probably the same thing. I mean, these these were deaths by misadventure, and they're they're tragic because they're senseless. As was the girl who died from diuretics last week. These are senseless tragedies that that are are, are the result of a stupid mistake in, in something that you thought you knew what you were doing or that somebody else thought they knew what they were doing. Well, going off topic, I don't know if you saw recently, I was I was on the news um, 
picture of me on the news for they found one of these uh, guys, you know, part of the, um, you know, the capital attack. In, uh, this guy named Logan Barn, uh, Barnhart. Logan was one of my athletes. Uh -huh. So he was at the Capitol. And I guess he was one of the guys. He pulled one of the Capitol police down the stairs, dragged him down the stairs. <laughs> and um, they basically, I guess it took, you know, it's, it's really, you know, pretty cool, the technology that they, they try to identify the people are there and they did it by facial recognition. Facial recognition yeah. And they caught him. They just caught him now. So anyways, it's all over the, it was all over the news and, you know, someone just, you know, they were sending me stuff saying, Hey, Rich, you were on the news about this guy who attacked the Capitol. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why? Was he wearing a Gaspari t-shirt? Why? why was um, he no, what happened was is they, they caught him, you know, the facial recognition. They caught him that way. But when you looked him up, you know, oh, it was a bodybuilder. And then they saw that on, you know, on videos, on his posts, he had pictures of me and him together. So it was funny just to have... <laughs> Guilt by association. <laughs> guilt, that's what I said. <laughs> guilt by association. I, I got nothing. To, you know what? I'm a working guy. I'm too busy to go to the Capitol and try to break into it. <laughs> that's not that maniacal. Yeah. yeah um, I don't, we, we, we're, we're not going to go off topic on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, but going back to what we were talking about, guys like you, Rich – occupy a very important role in our industry you are you are you're an you're an elder statesman be, not only because you were such a legend as a bodybuilder but because you continued to stay relevant in the industry through your business through the athletes that you've helped through your contributions and support of all the shows in the industry throughout the years there's not a lot of guys out there we can name them on one hand that hold uh, that can that can occupy the same position as you and i think it's incumbent upon guys like you to 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 be to take a really harsh stance ab about these types of dangerous behaviors that are rampant in our industry that are costing bodybuilders their lives and, and i'm glad you speak out about that and saying things like oh we never use diuretics because you didn't need them, and and uh, you know you you. Well, I didn't use diuretics. There were a few bodybuilders that used them, and I think they used them on occasion when they were behind in their schedule and needed to get themselves hard. And you know, I I I don't even know what injectable Lasix looks like. I did say I, I used aldactone and aldacticide in my later years that I thought they were better, and and I actually think they didn't make me better. They they made me worse. Um, and, you know, I was convinced by so-called experts that you need to take this and you don't, you don't need to take it. If you're preparing for a show properly, you don't need diuretics or, or that you are in diuretics, very, very minimal amounts. You know, any, anything more will only hurt you. All right. So let me ask you this. Let's say you're, let's say you're getting somebody ready for a show, right? And it, it's two weeks out and you look at them and you go, man, you need, you're four weeks out. Not yeah. Two. What What would you do? I wouldn't give him diuretics. I just let him go in the show and say, you know what? You're four weeks out. Do your best, and let's. And, and you know what? Make this as a, you know, not the main show, but kind of like a show, a practice show that you could go into, and then go into another show. There you go. Two to three weeks later. That's what they should. That's what they should do. You know, but because if you're going to do what you're doing, I mean, I, I couldn't even understand why women aren't doing diuretics. I mean, the one this, you know, this girl, what, what kind of competitor was she? Fitness figure, wellness. I think, I think she was. Me. Yeah, I think she was. I think she was either wellness or um, uh, classic physique. So classic physique is bodybuilding, basically. Yeah. You're trying to be ripped and look a certain condition. I mean, if you're wellness, you're not going to, you know, wellness and bikini, you're not going to, you don't need to get that. No, they, you know? wellness and bikini, ab, there is not a reason in the world why any of them would need a diuretic. No, they wouldn't Absolutely need Absolutely none. Okay, so rule them out right away. The, then you got, you know, the board short guys, the classic physique guys, bodybuilders, you got women fit, you got, you got uh, figure. 
women's physique and women's bodybuilding. Do they do? I don't even know if they do fitness anymore, but that's definitely a no-no. <laughs> yeah. so, they do so, fitness. It's not. A, it's not a big. Uh, I don't know why they don't make a big deal. I think it's probably the best uh, category because I didn't know too. But there's only six girls that do it, so I yeah, mean, it's like a routine. And I, you know, what it is. It's just difficult. You need a you need someone with gymnastics background to go into it, and right. you know, and, and then go into like preparing. There was a lot of great ones back in the day, you know, when it oh, when it yeah. first came out. A lot sure. of great, you know, really good. Yeah. But you know, you got but but though you know, so those are you know people that would never need it. But those classes of bodybuilding and and fit and figure and classic, those are the ones that just got to do the work, man. You got to do the work, and and th this idea that you cannot work as hard and get up to that two week mark and make up for not working by doing more diuretics is stupid. And yeah. somebody's got to say so because it's it's become ingrained in guru prep now that you are doing diuretics. Whether you need them or not, you're getting diuretics. But, you know, here's another thing. Listen, I you know, the drugs that I took when I competed and the drugs today are, very, I think, very different. I don't know if they're the same or I think they're very different. I mean, you're putting insulin into the mix with high androgens. I mean, when you do take very high amounts of androgens, doesn't it naturally make you hold water? Absolutely. So is that the reason why these gurus, so if the guy's taking, let's just say, some of these guys are taking a 1,000 grams, 1,000 milligrams a, day, a, a week or more, you know, two, two grams, is it like two grams a week? You know, 2,000 milligrams of tests, you know, in their body and all the other stuff they're taking. I, I cut mean, that out. I, I, they're, they're, they, I cut out. I cut out androgens a month out. Well, and that's then, the point. Then, but some guys are keeping androgens in because they want them to look fuller. Well, you can you look. Know? You can look fuller with other stuff. You don't need androgens. Look, water is water. Water is not muscle. You, you, you cannot make water into muscle. So, mm -hmm. you got you. you the, the idea that I'm going to stay full. What does that mean, stay full? It means your muscle only has X amount of capacity to make glycogen and store it. It, it, it. There's no extra. There's no overdoing it. There's no more that you can do than what your body does. And beyond that, it's when you spill over and you start holding the water and you look like shit. So you the diuretics as a tool okay so you're getting your carbon up you over carb you spill it's the day of the show what are you going to do there's a good argument for a mild diuretic right yeah now, you know yeah. so you know th that, that that's a that's a well that, that that could be it john if someone's preparing and as you know they're they're gonna they're gonna carb load and then they spill over because you know they want this guru wants to get, and we're, and we're just coming up with scenarios. We don't know if this is the way. <laughs> right, this, right. no, this is true, but I'm I'm thinking now that if a guru is getting someone ready for a show, I was always careful not to overcarb. Right. You know, I you know I I, I actually listened or I read a lot from Dorian Yates. He would carb up up to two days before the show. Then the day before the show, he would look out on his condition, and either he would drop his carbs if he looked like he was spilling over or he would just keep them the same to go into the show, which I thought was really a great idea because you can fill yourself up because you want to fill your muscles as right. much as you can without getting into your skin. So maybe these guys keep the androgens, make these guys load up on carbs, even like eating shit, burgers. And, right, right. You know, and then they, they eat all that and they say, well, just to be safe, Let's get you on a diuretic. But here's the thing that you've explained to me is that this woman was taking diuretics for a month. She wasn't doing that just the day before the show. Right. She was right. doing it for a month. That That is, I don't understand. No, because if you're ready and, yeah. you, and, and you're carbon up, which I don't believe in doing anyway, but if you're, it's more manipulation. The less manipulation, the better. But if you do it, it's understandable, okay? You've carved up, you're spilling. What do you do? 
there's a good argument for a shot of Lasix, and that's it. The reason it's called Lasix is it lasts for six hours. That's uh, how they get the name, Lasix. Lasts for six hours. So, yeah. And usually very little rebound, if any. So my position is, and, and, and that's what I've done, the handful of times that I've used diuretics, I've used injectable Lasix, IV, morning of the show, if the guy or the girl is spilling over. And I've only had to do that a few times, and that's the only time I would do it. So as a tool, that's very effective. But as a matter of course, whether you need it or not, or whether you're just using it in, in anticipation of needing it, I think is all wrong and dangerous. Yeah. Well, John, you know, the, the sport continually evolves to where these people training – have no idea at all. They don't study nutrition. Nope. They don't study anything, Just, but they just – and I'm not saying, listen, there's a lot of listeners, maybe they they do, which is really good. You know, they want to learn. I've always wanted to have the knowledge to know my body. I was a pre-med student. You know, I, yeah. I took up nutrition. You know, I, was, I loved, like, learning about the human body. And But there's a lot of guys who just do this, and they prepare for shows, and it's just like – you know what? It's in your hands. Get me in shape. Well, you know, you, you got to know you got to you got to know how things work. Yeah. You know, it, in, in any in any way, shape, or form. I mean, if you go to the gym and you're working, you're using a machine. You got to know how the machine works in order for you to get the benefit out of it. I think if you do things like you're into motorcycles or fast cars or you know, you want to know how those things work so that when you're driving it, you know, you know what you're you know what you're getting the most out of it. You know what you're doing. Your experience is based on what you can picture happening in your head as you use these things. And I think bodybuilding is no different. Your your body becomes you know, an entity that you manipulate by virtue of food, exercise, drugs, uh, you know, whatever, is something that you've got to be able, very, very aware of and know what you're doing. And I think, I, I mean, I know guys that don't do blood work. They're on gear all year long and they don't do any blood work. Yeah, that's, that's nuts, you know? But, and like you said a minute ago, there's definitely guys out there that, 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 toe the line they do everything right they did their blood work they knowledge they educate themselves they've got knowledge about what they're doing they're careful they're calculating they keep records and there's a lot of those guys and thank and you guys deserve a pat on the back because that's the right way to do it richie and i are talking about the guys who don't do that stuff who yeah. give the industry a black eye by dying on us and making a making a, a you know a, a br call, calling attention to what we do and shining a spotlight on the on the bad things that are associated with our sport rather than you know just do it right be careful do it right use your head educate yourself don't die don't get yourself thrown in the hospital and hooked up on IVs the, the, after prejudging don't I mean do besides it. that I mean you can you can shut your kidneys out, down you can give yourself a heart attack, shut your kidneys down, poison your liver. There's, there's a hundred things you could do to yourself by mismanaging the gear that you're taking. And, and, there's so, and you know, here's the thing. Diuretics are so much more dangerous than taking steroids. Yeah, by a million miles. Well, <laughs> you know, that's a good point. Of, of all the bodybuilders that have died, who died from steroids? None. Zero. None. None. Zero. It's the other shit. It's the diuretic. Well, you know, and let me say that I, you know, I've been to doctors and I'm in my fifties and I went to, you know, and they go, do you have heart issues? I'm like, why are you saying it? Cause you're a bodybuilder. You took steroids. I don't have any heart issues. It's cause I'm a bodybuilder, you know, like, it, you know, but anyone who's taking the, you know what this doctor said? And I, and I stopped going to so anybody, but anybody who takes steroids will have heart issues. Okay. All right. Let, 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 let's dispel that rumor right now. <laughs> Cardiomyopathy is what he's talking about. Cardiomyopathy is an enlarged heart. Yes. Now, if your normal body weight before you started to be a bodybuilder was, let's say, a five foot nine guy, my, you know, my, a guy my size, my height, five foot nine, I should weigh about 150 to 155 pounds you know, according to the, the, the height and weight charts that, you know, I pr promote ideal, you know, weight for your particular height. Okay. 
Now let's say at that instead of 150 pounds, now I've added 100 pounds of muscle to that, and that's I could I could name five guys that have put on 100 pounds of muscle: Sergio Oliva Jr., Victor, um, uh, uh, um, Dexter Jackson. Does, I don't know. I could, I could go. I, if I thought about it for a second, I could probably give you a, 10 guys that have gained in excess of 100 pounds of muscle. If you gain 100 pounds of muscle, that 100 pounds of muscle versus 100 pounds of fat needs blood supply. It's, it's got capillaries. It's got it's it's got a, a bunches of cells and, and structures that need oxygen, that need the blood to go to those areas and and do what they do to carry the nutrients, oxygen, et cetera. How much bigger of a pump do you need to pump the blood from a 150 pound guy to a 250 pound guy? Yeah, more blood. Bigger heart. Heart's bigger a muscle. Heart. You, the heart's a muscle. You work it more. What does it do? It's so big. normally the, the part of the heart that grows is the left, the left, left side, left ventricle. Left ventricle. Left ventricle. So because that's the 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 one that the one that have. that's working right. So so if you have this giant heart now, the bigger the heart is, the less efficient it becomes. So that's why the same bodybuilders have heart issues. But when you get small again and you lose that hundred pounds or fifty of that hundred pounds of muscle, your heart your heart goes through the same kind of atrophy that your arm does when you put it in a cast. If you're not using it that much, it gets back. It goes back you know, to, to a, a less engorged state that it doesn't need to have that size pumping around. So it, it goes back to normal or close to it. So, so I mean, I, I know we talked, you know, offline about losing, you know, being lighter as you age. Right. You think it's, it's, it's more healthy for someone into their fifties and sixties. They can't be muscle bound. They can't no. be as big. And, and, you know, it's funny because our bodies actually fight it. You have something called sarcopenia, mm -hmm. where once you're at 50, I, I can't keep the muscle. I don't, I mean, I, I, people go, wow, you have a lot of muscle. But I mean, you know, looking at pictures of me, how much muscle I had and how much I have now, I lost about 30 pounds of muscle you know, I, I've, in, my, in my frame. I've lost 50 pounds in the last three years. And I'm, wow. and I'm guessing 45 of it was muscle. Wow. And, and, and you know what? It was harder to lose it than it was to put it on. Really? I think so. I had to fucking starve myself daily to get that muscle off. Really? Yeah, it's it's very difficult. But the the fact of the matter is, the lighter you are, the longer you live. That is an absolute etched in stone fact. And if you don't believe me, go anywhere in public. I always use an international airport because I think that's the greatest cross section of America you'll ever see. Go to the domestic terminal of any international airport, and you find me an 80-year-old guy that weighs 350 pounds. Yeah, you're going to find it. It's, I mean, so so it is unhealthy to be heavy, whether it's muscle or fat. Right. Well, I mean, obviously. Fat is worse. Of course. Of course. Of course. So, you know, optimally, when you cross the 50-yard line, you really should be thinking about, you know, getting smaller. If, you, if you're a big bodybuilder, competitive bodybuilder who's like 230, 240, 260. I got a friend, he's, he's six foot, he's 260. He's 54 years old. He's been 260 for the last 20 years. He doesn't want to be anything other than 260. And yeah. I go, bro, you're going to die. You are not going to be a 260, 80 year old man. It's not going to happen. So you got to back off and, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's what you want. I know guys, I know guys who will say that they rather die at, 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 you know, a heavyweight, a big muscular, you know, let's say 250 pounds ripped. They rather die at 250 ripped than you die at, at, you know, uh, you know, 180 pounds, you know, not so shredded. <laughs> you don't want to spend eternity as a small guy. I mean, that's in the, that's the, the, the maniacal. Well, I mean, you know, it's you it's. Know. It, I, I think about myself. I've been bodybuilding my whole life. You know, I'm posting pictures at, you know, 15, 16. So I've been bodybuilding my whole life. I've always had muscle on my frame. I was never a skinny guy. I mean, I was a skinny guy when I was like 12. 
12, 13. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was never like, so now it's like, it's hard to like say, okay, I'm going to lose more weight, get a little leaner. You know, I do check my heart. They do check the left ventricle. I, I had a slight enlargement, slight enlargement, not to a dangerous level. Forgot what he told me, the centimeters or certain centimeters that it can get to. But most, most athletes have enlarged left ventricles. What about a sprinter or a runner, like someone who's really, you know, a, a cardiovascular athlete? Don't they have issues with their heart as well? No, because they've it, it goes by body, it goes by mass. It's it's how much tissue does that heart have to service? Uh, and and it's not been, how much work it has to do. Well, it it, it is how much. You're a, like an endurance runner, and you're doing you know, I don't know, fifty mi- you know marathons. Isn't that a lot of work on your heart or your heart? Yeah, but but it's, only, it. but it's only pumping blood to 150 pounds of, of person versus pumping blood to 250 pounds of yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. If you're 250 versus 150, part of that 100 pounds is is fluid, blood. So you're, 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 you need more blood because you have more tissue. So the heart has got to move it. So – the sprinter, as long as his body weight stays low, his heart's very efficient because it doesn't have to do much work. That's why at, at a sprinter or a distance runner, that's why their resting heart rate is like, you know, 50. It's so low. Low yeah. because it's, it's got to move such little amount of fluid. But, you know, you, you pack on a, an extra 100 pounds, that heart's working a lot harder. Yeah, a lot harder, yeah. yeah. So that, that's so. there. Well, this was a good show, John. <laughs> uh, you know, again, for our listeners, I, you know, it's just a shame that people, like, if you really want to prepare for contests or, or want to understand about preparing for a contest, you need more time. Like like I said earlier, 16 weeks was a minimum time. And I was in shape to get to get into a contest 16 weeks out. You know, I wasn't like this fat blob getting into a, you know. I had a guy, like I said, who was, a normal guy with normal body fat. He wasn't obese, but it, it, I, I did it in six months because I really wanted to get it. And I got him shredded, John, right. he was shredded. <laughs> so my point to this is that you don't need harmful diuretics. No. They are very dangerous throughout my whole career. Being known as one of the most ripped guys, I never, I, I'm not going to say never. When I did use them, they didn't help me at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so, right. I mean, and there's there's going to be guys that say, oh, you know, if you did them wrong, or you, know, you I, I would have helped you, yeah, you would have been, you would have been more shredded. Yeah, would have, could have. Science doesn't prove negative. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the the thing here is, we love bodybuilding. We love seeing people get involved in bodybuilding. We love bodybuilding shows. We love the competition. We love getting. We love everything about it. What we don't love is watching our brothers make stupid mistakes. Our brothers and our sisters making stupid mistakes. That cost their lives, and you guys just got to be careful, man. You got to know what you're doing. Don't take this lightly. You are playing with fire, especially those three drugs: DNP, insulin, and, and diuretics. If you're messing with any of that stuff, and a lot of you guys do, make sure you know what you're doing. And I know you would agree with that. Yes. So on that note. <laughs> On that note, guys, hit the like button, subscribe, tell us who you want to see, and we'll see you next week. See you next week, guys.